Chantal talked with him recently in Hollywood, and she asked him how he's feeling these days. I feel very, very good. Um, there was a time this year when mentally I was a little down in the dumps because we've had a little trouble with the press in England, well, one particular newspaper. But uh, as far as the throat goes, it's fine. Uh, I've rested it a lot. Um, in fact, I think my voice is stronger as a result of the operation. Sometimes that can happen. You can have your tonsils out, for example, and, and your, your, your voice gets stronger. Um, there was a lot of panic in the English press, I think, particularly that I was dying and, and that I wouldn't be able to sing anymore, but that's because the tabloids didn't tend to over-exaggerate things. It's interesting that you mention the British press. How do you compare the way the British press deals with celebrities and the way the American press deals with celebrities? Oh, there's no comparison. We have tabloid newspapers every day in England um, that really go for the throat. But I, I've only had trouble with a, a couple of newspapers, one in particular in England, and the rest of the press, I must say, have been very defensive. Uh, they've been on my side in that situation because what they printed, I mean, we're taking them to court uh, for libel. I'm seeing it through. I mean, it was a horrendous time. Some of the stuff they printed it uh, was just unbelievable. Let's talk about your music, your most recent album, a live album with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. What a mm. wonderful, wonderful backup band. Absolutely. Um, to work with a, a set of musicians uh, like that is, is an opportunity not to be missed. They learned a lot from us, we certainly learned, learned a lot from them, we learned about light and shade again, playing, instead of playing at one volume, playing, it, it was, we did 27 concerts and every night was an absolute pleasure. Isn't that difficult to do a live concert and well, then put it directly on an album? Is, no, that's why I'm so proud of it, I'm not a fan of live albums, I never have been, um, but this is, I'm, we, worked at, we worked on it for a year with the technicals, from the technical side of recording an orchestra um, uh, live with, with loud instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, and it worked very, very well. And as far as the, the people sitting out front, you could hear the orchestra as well as what we were playing. And that is important. It would have been stupid to go to Australia and play so loudly that you couldn't hear the orchestra. There's 88 of them on stage. Your style, Elton, is definitely your style. How much do you think that contributes to your longevity? Maybe from, I mean, if I do a tour, people always think, what's he going to wear now? Uh -huh. um, but I don't really think it contributes to longevity. If you're just going to base your career on, on what you wear. Uh, well, then, then... some of it has. I mean, it's fabulous. I mean, everybody talks about it. It's a wonderful style. Well, uh, well it's, it's, either, it's, it's a style and it's no style. I know, I wear some pretty awful things, but I mean, I like wearing them. Maybe one of the reasons you have such longevity is because you're very aware of burnout and avoiding it. Burnout is just working a little, that little bit too much, and but I've always known when burnout exists and you stop and then you just, if you don't stop, then you really will burn out. I mean, you just have to take the time off to just a couple of years from touring and stuff like that and just... Otherwise, people see you too much, you're too much available. You have to have the mystique, it's all important. Mm -hmm. People know a lot about me, but they know nothing. In Hollywood, I'm Chantal. Elton John.